Hey, hello and welcome to this new course, Grasshopper Fundamentals. I'm super excited and it's very important to me. You see, I bring out a lot of very specialized videos about Ladybug, Honeybee, CFD analysis in Grasshopper with Butterfly and Eddy3D, uh, Dragonfly and many more. The problem is that a lot of my audience, they want to jump into these third-party plugins, but lack the fundamental knowledge of Grasshopper. And that's where this course comes in. This will allow more people to understand what I'm doing in my other videos much faster and much more intuitive. Many questions I get on my scripts are fundamentally Grasshopper questions and not necessarily questions on the third-party plugins. In this episode, we will look into the Grasshopper interface. And if you never used Grasshopper before, fear not, I will guide you through step by step. All right, here we are in Rhino 7. If you have Rhino 7 or even I think Rhino 6, then you should have Grasshopper installed automatically. You can start Grasshopper from this green icon with a small black Grasshopper on it. If this is not here, you can start Grasshopper with typing Grasshopper in the command line. That also allows you to start Grasshopper. You can also go here on right click and scroll down and you find this icon Grasshopper. That actually opened this small little toolbar which you can uh, place anywhere in your Rhino interface. For example, I could put it here. Then I have this new toolbar with a few icons. They all belong to Grasshopper. Now, what is Grasshopper? Let's start it up. When you start, it will should look like this a bit, probably. You might not have these green icons here or maybe you have different colors here or maybe it's just empty. These are just uh, previous scripts I created. So it's a, like a, a shortcut to the, pre to the last uh, nine scripts. Now, Grasshopper is a graphical parametric scripting environment. Scripting in the sense of you don't need to script anything. You can just uh, use tools and plug them together and that creates your Grasshopper script. So that makes it super accessible for people who don't know scripting or know scripting just a little bit like myself. Now, it allows to create very, very complex models. And in case of Ladybug, for example, uh, it allows for analysis. It can access third party uh, software which are outside of Rhino and more. We will not spend too much time in Rhino today. We will just look at the interface here. Uh, you can make it very, very big. The interface is quite important to understand. Um, <clears throat> so I would, I would try to um, not skip this lesson. <laughs> I would just place here something just to, so we have something on our canvas. We start with the canvas. I just place here a tool. You don't need to follow that yet. Of course you can if you want. I just place here something and maybe a slider, whatever. It's it's it doesn't matter really. The canvas is the, the place where we do a, we we make our script and where we connect with whatever is in 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 the Rhino. You can see here you can here open a Rhino script which you previously uh, created. You can save a Rhino script. You can change the you can you can change the zoom factor of this uh, window. You can also do that with the mouse wheel. You can change the zoom. You can actually see that here when I'm scrolling. You can um, go here to the entire document. If you, it will just frame everything you created within the canvas, and it will also uh, guide you back to certain areas of the of the canvas. The canvas has this corner that means that's our kind of kind of um, origin where everything happens, and in the other directions, basically endless endless space for cr crazy scripts. You can also create views. For example, I have. Um, if I copy here from something and I have a certain portion of my script somewhere, then I can create a view and name this view one or whatever that that portion of the script does. And I can go here and if I go back to one, it automatically goes to that portion I created before. You also have the option to sketch in Grasshopper. That's very useful if you want to think about stuff and how they might connect it or you want to um, create some, you want to mark up or comment on, on a script for somebody else, That's then this is also very useful. You can change the color, you can press um, OK, and then you can select everything what you created. If I create now, now a new a new object here, then this is a new sketch, which has, which is its own object. Here are some other tools which gives you a shortcut to what Grasshopper might um, 
think you might use as an as a next step it could be even that these are based on my usual uh, objects i'm using but of course uh, we don't we will not use that yet uh, number slider i always use number sliders i always use boolean toggles i don't use merge a lot but yeah it, it gives you some suggestions of what could be used but these are just su suggestions of scripts uh sorry tools which you can also find here so this is one thing so this is our canvas now i go a bit further here because we have actually i, I, I missed some stuff the canvas also has um a few other options here which we will talk about um, in one of the next i think in one of the next uh, videos this is all about visualization on your grasshopper on the grasshopper ah uh, sorry in the rhino viewport so this this portion here is all about vis visualization sorry in the rhino viewport now next up, what else do we have? Also in the canvas, we have um, this is like a compass, which just shows wherever your what well, the most items are. So it, it shows you the location of the origin, but also where. So if you got lost somehow like this, then you can see it points it points to that direction. Then you can um, move here. A few more things about your mouse the mouse uh, options here. So obviously you can grab things with the left mouse button. With the left mouse button double click, you can enter a search. That search through the different tools I have. So I can actually search for a tool here. For example, point, point. That opens a container. I will talk about what a container is. It opens a container that I can place here. It's the same tool as here. That would be the same thing. It's also this is the same container. It just allows me to if I already know what tool I want to use, I can just type it in. If you click the mouse wheel, then you have options to disable the solver, disable Grasshopper from constantly calculating the next step. So imagine a script is always like looping the whole time. It always it always uh, checks it always checks if something is to do and then it, it will do it. With this you can stop the solver and you can modify things and then you can run it again but we'll get there we will get there there's also um, a find option there's a navigate document using scale down map and and more we'll look at that in, in later videos it's not yet necessary with the right mouse we can access a lot of other things actually what you just saw the log solver and recompute is also here but it also allows to to grab an item and if I right click on it, it tells me things about this specific item. Uh, if, for example, I go here, it allows me to look at this item more closely. It tells me it's a, a B wrap, it, the previews on, it's enabled and you can bake it. We'll talk about all these things later. The runtime warnings, here it says floating parameter, B wrap failed to collect, collect data. I'll also explain what that means. Wire display, reverse, flatten, graph, simplify and so on. Um, so don't worry yet we will get there very quick very soon so that what you can do with the right mouse button and it's very important to understand very important there is if you go here very close and i go and i right click here at the at this little half half moon here you get a different drop down menu as if i go here also you have this small little icon on the top that just shows you the the um, error message again so in case there's an error, it will show you an error message. Floating parameters B rep failed to collect data. Don't worry what it means. I will explain it very soon, most likely in the next video. So this is about the interface. Now the next up here is is our drop down menus or to, uh, uh, toolbars. So we have toolbars. I have quite a lot of toolbars here. And you might not have you might not have as many as me, especially when you just started with Grasshopper. Don't don't worry. We will explain. I will explain what all this means. So what you should have is this one: parameters, maths, sets, vector, curve, surface, mesh, intersect, transform, and display. These are the standard tools within Grasshopper. Now, because I have some um, plugins installed in grass in rhino which also have components in grasshopper they are within the standard toolbar here for example i have landscape objects this is because i have lens design installed in rhino 
so you might not have this toolbar or this this uh this object here but don't worry another thing you might not have is this one the bifocus i'll explain what that does but it's a, it's a third party plugin but you should have again math sets vector curve surface mesh intersect transform and display these are the toolbars you should have now further up here we have our the, the name of our grasshopper object a grasshopper script if i click here i can i can see okay there is it, it has this drop down window it shows a small version of my script what does that mean well you can save your script you can just save it somewhere just create a new folder and i call this interface now you can see it's changed to interface if i now create a new document i can cre just create a new document on the fly here my uh, first document is gone but and it it's just it's got lost basically but it's not really lost it's just in the background so i can go here and uh, choose which which of these scripts i want to work with so i can go back to interface so now i have two scripts running or they're not really running actually when i use the one or the other then the active will will actually perform the tasks i can also close this here because i haven't yet i haven't really done anything in the new script it, it didn't ask me to save now what else is in here now that is pretty much it already for, for grasshopper except for the typical interface you have in pretty much every uh, windows program you have file where you can save where you can open and close scripts uh, there are some special folders in here don't worry about this yet you can edit things cut and copy which you can also see the shortcuts you can view that's an interesting one so you can turn on th different things here for example the remote control panel this is a panel within rhino which allows you to uh, remote control some of the items within the script um the ribbon tab i actually don't use that really it's gives it just shows uh symbols instead of text as you can see but yeah i don't like it that much it's a personal preference canvas toolbar let's see this is the this is this one can turn it off and on i will talk about this in the next video or in one of the next videos um just very quickly you can copy and paste with ctrl c and ctrl v you can just copy and paste things very quickly you can also grab a lot of things at the same time i will um, discuss grouping and so on in, in another video don't worry about this yet there are a few other things it just you know just go through and test these uh, nothing can happen really just remember what you changed and some of the things it's just you know store view which we already discussed here uh, you have seen that already data viewer that that's interesting if you have very complex scripts i would not you know don't worry about that yet display um that is interesting you can draw icons that's currently on i like the icons but you can also just change that to text then you have text here and you can see when i when i'm just hovering it will tell me what this uh, object is it contains a collection of bereps boundary rep re presentation pre presentations boundary uh, boundary re presentations it's just a fancy word for for uh, rhino objects but yeah we will we'll see we'll see what that what it does later the display again i, I will just go back draw fancy wires that's something we will discuss next time it's you for that you need to understand what different data flows are it's also just a fancy word don't worry about that but basically you can have and here for example you see i have a slider with a number and that's connected with a panel it's a very simple or a float a float number which i can just then visualize here on the on the panel i can see that what that is it's not really useful it's not very useful as a script but it just explains that the wires transfer this information to here and the information can be different and that could can be shown in the type of wire that's why it says draw fancy wires i will just leave it on draw full names that will just draw a, the whole name for for the object and then you have preview settings these again these are the this is the preview of the visualization of your objects within rhino we we're not yet there in the next video we certainly are then there's different ways in how to show points also again this is all about how we uh, visualize stuff within in rhino not within 
grasshopper. Solutions, that's what you already saw. It's about this uh, tool we, with which we use by clicking on the mouse wheel. Again, we will go through these in more detail. And then there are tutorial files, of course. Simple input and math, interpolating values, wires and conversions, polynomial graphing with derivatives, measure and display values. See. With um, me going through all these, I actually look at the things the first time myself. Anyway, uh, there are other things, of course. The Grasshopper support, online reference, export help, download SDK help. This is the, the, the developer's environment. And about, it just shows you this um, start image, which, which, the, which version it is, when it was created, uh, and the copyright, and so on. Just close that again and yeah that's for the first episode of grasshopper fundamentals i hope you like this episode i know a lot of people are waiting for the next video on ladybug it will come don't worry i just need to go my own pace uh, i'm super busy in my my day-to-day -day job so bear with me but there will be more of course all right see you in the next video